What's up you guys, it's FeedyX, and a question I get all the time is how can I learn to punish things properly? Tekken is a game with so much legacy information, how can I learn every character's moves and how to punish everything? Well, I have a few recommendations on that. The first thing you can do is hop into games right away, get beat up, and go check out the replays. Go check out the problematic characters, find their problematic moves. You don't have to go through every single move, just the moves that are beating you up, right? But say you don't want to go through all that, how do legacy players learn the information kind of intuitively how are they guessing what these punishes are right because it seems like if you watch any like streamer or a high level player sometimes they just know how punishable something is even if it's a brand new character what how are they figuring that out i want to show you how people go through that process we'll need some initial tools though first when i learned punishment in tekken tag 2 before i looked at every single character's frame data i don't even think i looked at every single character's i just practiced a bunch and got in the field i had two punishes I had my standing fast punish, like a jab punish, and my standing launch punish, okay? And then from crouch, I also just picked two punishers. If you look at character guides, there are tons of punishers you can pick from to get more and more damage. But these are kind of the top priority ones. Get your damage if they're punishable, launch them if they're launchable, okay? Let's refine the terminology a bit. I'm going to assume you're pretty new. So your standing fast punish, usually the fastest one you could do is a 10 frame punish. So if a move is minus 10, you do your 10 frame punish. Minus 10 or worse, by the way, minus 11, minus 12, minus 13, etc. The fastest launch punish is usually 15 frames, right? So I've picked Jin, and these are Jin's punishes that work. There are a few options, right? He has multiple 15 frame launchers, like down 3 plus 4, right? And this actually does more damage. But I'm picking the hop kick just for uh, ease of carrying this to different characters, right? And then you have your low fast punish, right? You block a quick poke low, you duck it. While standing 4-4 four, four is your quick one while standing two is your launch one, okay? Let's get a bit more specific. Low fast punish in this case is your 11 frame while standing punish. Not every character has this. Some characters have like 13 frame ones. Again, if you watch guides for your character, you'll see the specific punishes. And then in Jin's case, he has a 14 frame while standing launch, okay? Most characters will be at 15 frames, but Jin's while standing two is 14 frames fast. So you block a minus 14 low or worse, you get a launch. These are our key tools we're going to start with, okay? Now, the first thing you can do, again, besides just hopping in, getting beat up, checking out the replays, is you can go into punishment training. The in-game punishment training is really, really good. It'll give you really specific punishes. Like, it's telling me down 3 plus 4 here, right? But if I look at the frames on Kazuya's move in the bottom right here, you'll see it says minus 17. Based on our tool set, I can use my 15-frame launcher, the up forward 4. Okay? So I'm going to block this. It says minus 12. Now, it recommends I use back one, two, but in terms of building this familiarity, this very base muscle memory, I can just do my 10 frame punish, two, four. There are moves this will fail for. You see, with the pushback on this, there's a chance some of my moves will just mess up and whiff. So in Kazuya's case, most of them are reliable. But be aware that there are some situations where you do your 10 frame punish and it'll just like whiff. Okay. Punishment training in game is really good. Highly recommend it. Let's go into matches. This is realistically where most people will get most of their in-game, well, in-game Tekken experience. Most of their Tekken experience and learning time will be done in matches. So I'm going to search for a match and try to apply these rules right now. The first tip I'm going to give you when you're looking for these blocks uh, in-game and these punishes, block strings don't exist in this game. There will always be a weakness to string offense. This game is heavily built on that. Of course, there are some exceptions, 99% of cases, right? First few rules, there will usually be a high that you can duck or a mid that you can punish. Power crush highs are usually safe. Power crush mids are usually unsafe. Now, this is not how I recommend winning. This is how I recommend learning your punishment. Okay, so you're going to block a lot. And because you're blocking and not finding opportunities all the time, you're going to lose a lot. But you will learn a lot. Let's check this out. Azusena, very string heavy character. You see that string ended in a mid? I was a bit slow during my explanation, but I'm going to try my punishes here. If she goes for throws, that's something you're going to have to get good at too, is breaking throws. There, my 10 frame punish worked, okay? Every time I block a move, I'm going to try these punishes. If something seems safe, I'm going to try to duck it, okay? Okay, I ducked there and got blown up by the stance. Okay, my punish worked here. Now, of course, as a player who's played this game for a bit longer, I do know the frames on a lot of these moves, but I'm trying to demonstrate this specific me methodology to you. One thing that will be a bit tough with this method 
people aren't always going to block. There were multiple strings I just dealt with where the Azusena was just not blocking. So that was a true punish, but there are a few cases I'll point out where they're not real punishes. Before I do that, I want to say that the key part of this entire tactic, she didn't block there, that was safe. The key part of this entire tactic is blocking the entire string. Don't duck for no reason and don't try to interrupt too soon. Strings usually have two to three hits, if not more. Right? There's a punish, she did whiff, but that, that string would have been punishable. So the, uh, one big problem already is this Azusena is not blocking. That was unsafe. And you'll see that I'm not ducking for absolutely no reason. Given I'm not running my offense, but I literally am just doing a lot of stand blocking. That's safe. She's not blocking. This is a crazy example. I'm trying to demonstrate block punishment, and my opponent is not blocking after doing their attacks. So basically, everything they're doing is unsafe. But the whole point is saving your HP as long as possible. That was my throw break I messed up. That string is actually safe, but the last hit can be ducked. You see, okay, this is ridiculous. We're going to have to find a new example because she is not blocking at all. There's a whiff. So let me explain the rest of the concepts here because this is not a good example, okay? Big thing is block strings don't exist. There will always be a weakness. High, mid. The high, the mids are punishable. The highs are duckable. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the next one ASAP. Okay. The other rule that's really important for preserving your HP is don't duck for no reason. You want to duck when you specifically have a low read. And without that low read, there's a few problems. You're exposing yourself to really risky moves. And you're also not really going to learn how to punish things if you're trying to always get around them, right? So don't worry about ducking them if your goal is to learn punishment. You want to stand block as many things as possible unless you know their lows. And then practice your actual punishment here. 15 frames, 10 frames, etc. So I don't like one and dunning but I want to keep this video short. Let's move on to an opponent who will probably block after they do their moves. Okay, so block strings don't exist. Look for the weaknesses, but don't automatically assume there's going to be highs coming. Just go for these mid blocks. Don't swing too soon. That's probably the biggest one. And when I say, so that's when I, when I say block a lot, I'm saying don't swing too soon. Strings are two to three hits. I should probably put that down. Strings are usually two, honestly, even two to four hits. So keep blocking, okay? Top priority, Jack is gonna be a good example here. Uh, Jack has a lot of strings, but he also has some stances. So when you're dealing with characters with stances as well, you're gonna wanna look for the mids that are probably unsafe and the highs that you can usually duck. So let's test this out. I'm gonna block a lot. I did my punish there and it worked, cool. And yes, I can Korean backdash and I can move around. That punish was real. But um, in your case, you don't have to do that. You can do slow back dashes, you can move forward, and you can still play your offense. You don't have to totally do nothing. It's just once the opponent is in your face and attacking, don't try to mash your way out of it. That's the key concept I want to talk about. And again, this is not a Jin guide. Oh, that was... Okay, Rage Art is not safe. It's not a Jin guide. This is not a how to win ranked guide. This is a how to learn your punishment guide, okay? So, you're still probably getting comfortable with your offense. You're... Okay, that put me in crouch, so that's my punish. Playing the game a bit. Okay, I got hit. He whiffed. He whiffed again. Okay. Oh, I mashed in between. So I, I didn't follow my own rule. I interrupted the string. That's my 10 frame punish. That just works. And you'll see right away that players at this level will do strings that are unsafe. And that's kind of why we want to try this strategy at this level. Is because... People are still willing to do things that will get them punished. At a, the higher level you go without learning this, the more you'll fight players who are afraid of doing things, there's a duckable high, um, that are unsafe. They're more respectful of the idea that they can die. At this level, people are still learning what their characters do. They're still getting comfortable with the game engine. So frame safety isn't their top priority. This is why it's such a good idea to just block as much as you can and punish as much as you can. Okay, so I don't get a punish there. There's too much pushback. Maybe that string is a high. Maybe if he does that again, I can try to duck it. Okay. There's a big low. I'll probably have to block that in the future. I missed the duck reaction there, and I didn't punish that low. So let's look again. There's a low there. I've seen that string before. If you get hit by something, try and be really mentally cognizant of what is hitting you. I know it's very visually overwhelming playing this game for the first time. 
So this is a slow, long process. This, is, this isn't something that will teach you punishment in one or two matchups, right? I think that's a punish. This is something you will figure out over a long period of time. But this is my kind of methodology for learning punishment on the fly in game without looking at all of the frames in the move list. Okay. There's a low there. So realistically, if this is my first time playing against Jack, I would have gotten hit by a lot of those lows. I probably would have lost multiple rounds, if not the entire, entire set, right? Going through the learning process in this game, you have to be willing to lose, okay? I'm at, at my rank right now, like on my main character, I'm losing so much trying to learn new strategies and things like that, and that is just part of Tekken. You will lose a lot, and it's okay. So that's a charge move. I probably can't uh, punish that. Instead, I probably have to interrupt it. There's a low. Okay, can I punish that? That looks safe. Maybe that's a high power crush. Whoa. Okay. Getting hit. Okay, that was unsafe. I messed up my 2-4. But as you can see, I'm doing 2-4 a lot. I'm looking for punishment. There I tried to do my 2-4, and I got interrupted. So now I know that that string is plus. He's uninterruptible. I don't get to attack. That's good to know. I don't think that was a punish. <laughs> Maybe it was, though. He's charging. I'm going to chill. I'm going to block a lot. If I read a low, I'll duck. But I'm not going to duck for no reason. There's a punish. Cool. I can punish this with while standing 4-4. There's a punish again. And look at how much HP I'm getting. Like, learning your punishment goes a long way. Throw breaks are also pretty important. Going to keep blocking. There's that high I probably need to, to start ducking. Oh, I was late on the wall standing 4-4. Four, four. There's a high, it looks plus. He whiffed in the open. And he whiffed again. Oh, Jesus. Ah, so that one wasn't a punish, he just didn't block. Okay. That's the one downside of this method. Um, I will probably mention it multiple times, is that if your opponent decides not to block, as we saw with the Azusena earlier, you will probably get some false positives. Oh my goodness. Okay, he's blowing all his moves. I'm just gonna block. Oh, reacting to the low. They made that low a lot slower. So I, I, I spent a lot of Tekken 7 trying to practice reacting to that low. Uh, they made it a bit easier for me, so. People are, again, learning, getting really comfortable with their characters. They're uh, just figuring out how things are working. They're not gonna play super safe. That's why it's so important to Learn your punishment as soon as you can, which is what we're trying to do here. Not ducking for no reason, blocking as much as possible. Let's see if I duck for no reason, the mids will hit me. Okay. And your opportunity will come. People are unlikely to do one option over and over again, especially safe ones. Does a throw, I was too slow. But throws can be ducked, so if somebody is abusing throws against you to get around your heavy blocking style, you can put a duck in on a read, but... Oh my god. I probably die here. <laughs> I probably die here. And... Again, this is probably something you would insert with the rest of your regular gameplay, right? Like, I'll probably do electrics and things like that, I'll probably do my forward four. I just wanted to really heavily demonstrate how often people will do punishable strings and punishable moves and really give you opportunities to learn this practically. That said, I'm always going to recommend that you go into practice mode, that you go into... Okay, that's a safe high. That's good to know. I uh, recommend you go into practice mode, go into the punishment training, go into the replay mode. The replay mode is very, very robust. But these are the rules that I thought it would be useful to convey, especially at lower level, where people are going to do them much more often. And there's that... Oh, wow! I wanted to duck that string earlier, but I didn't realize he stepped so far back afterwards. So GG's to Mr. Lee. Um, again, you won't see every move. You won't see every option. But by applying this focus, this specific focus, you will start to see more examples of things you can deal with. Okay. In the event that you actually do fight somebody who really, really knows what they're doing, like I'm talking they never do punishable moves, then that's a different story for another video. And those are like a dime a dozen, right? You won't see, wait, that's the wrong phrase. Those are one in a million. A dime a dozen means there's a lot. You won't see a lot of people of that level 
in yellow rank, in red rank. People will do a lot of unsafe moves. But the biggest thing that I noticed in working with a lot of players at this level is they won't follow this block a lot rule. They will constantly be trying to interrupt, thinking that it's their turn, thinking that the string is over, but the string has two to four hits. So it's, it's tough because you're trying to learn your character properly while trying to learn how the other character works. So it's, it, it, it makes sense that you would make this kind of mistake, that people would make this kind of mistake. Um, however, this is the kind of focus necessary. I think Victor would be a great example here because Victor is known for using a lot of strings. Let's try and block as long as possible. Again, we might lose using this method, but I want to really show that this is a feasible way to learn punishment. I'm paying attention to his moves more than I'm paying attention to HPs and things like that. Okay, so my while standing punish works there. My 10 frame punish works here. One thing you should also do is practice doing your launch punishes, right? So if I block a big mid, maybe I can hop kick it. That one has too much pushback, so the punish will be a bit different. Okay. That move is actually... These moves are actually safe that he's doing. He's just not blocking. Kind of like the Azucena player earlier. And if they whiff something, you can always get a punish if you're fast enough. Whiff punishment is probably another huge skill you would want to learn here. That's an unsafe move. It does have an extension to be aware of, though. Okay, he's doing lows. One plus two throw. I'm blocking a lot. He whiffed. That string is safe. He just mashed in between. You can tell because the first hit did not connect. Okay, he's doing the big low. Keep that in mind. There, he blocked that time. So that move is safe. Break the throw. Keep checking it out. Those throws are really, really fast right now. At the time of recording, those throws have a faster throw break window than the other throws. But even with all my experience, I'm free to them. Big launching low. You can tell, by the way, if their low staggers them. Like you could saw how you could see how I blocked it and he got kind of stuck. That usually means you get a big launch punish. Okay, he, he mashed. That was not a punish. He's mashing a lot. <laughs> so, you'll get a good chance to learn some punishes, but not always the most accurate. Okay, big low again. I'm not, I'm not tripping too much. That's a launch punishable mid. But not if he's in heat. The advantages of looking at the move list. But it's worth trying anyways. Fast throw. I'm not going to break that anytime soon. I'm going to try to duck that on a read. Oh, I blocked a low. Nice. <laughs> so there, again, doing my launch punish. The combo I practiced. The, the, the gun is a high, in case you didn't know. So that's something also to keep in mind. If you see him pull out the gun off of the knee or off of 2 2, two you can duck it. That's, again, the whole no block strings rule. There's a high to be exploited. Missed my punish. I don't even know how to punch that. Forward, forward. Wow, that is too fast. <laughs> um, one other quick rule is if a move goes into stance, there will probably be a weakness. It's rare that somebody can go into stance for free. Okay. He whiffed. Little whiff punish. There's a low in that string. And that string is actually a low high. The foot stab into the high stab. So if I'm good there, I can duck that. I know these are all safe. Oh, I broke it that time. He's blocking, yep. Oh, I ducked the throw on a read. That is unsafe. Nice, we get a little 10 frame punish. Oh, I didn't launch it. Oh my god, these throws are so fast, bro. Okay. And then, so this is a direct example of, like, spam blocking. Now what I want you to do is integrate that into playing the game. So I'm going to do some electrics. Oh, there's a high there. Try to block that. Oh, okay. So you can't launch that. I blocked the low and I tried my while standing two. I didn't launch it. So what I'm going to have to try to do instead is that while standing four, four. He mashed after. I thought I got my electric punish. <laughs> I thought I was cool for that one. Let's try again. I know that's safe. That one is, uh, I'll try, I'll try out the punish. I know that's safe, but I want to demonstrate it as much as possible. So we'll try our punishment. Throw a break. One plus two throw. Okay. While standing 4-4 four, four on that low string. Wow, that is so fast. <laughs> and then he's been doing that low the whole time, right? So even though I didn't block it twice, finally got a block on the last one. I want to try and kill him here because I don't want to deal with his throw game like that. Am I dead? He's healing. 
Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, with this method, you will lose a lot. But you'll learn more about how Victor functions. The next time you fight Victor, it'll go easier. So fast forward to fighting 30 Victors. You know how his moves kind of work. You went back to practice mode. You went back to replay mode. Your punishment will be so much sharper and your gameplay will be so much cleaner. You'll get to continue fighting and have all this punishment already learned. Tekken, again, because of the huge move list, you already know this, the legacy knowledge, the move lists, it's a lot. But once you integrate it, it makes your gameplay so much cleaner. And I personally find that really, really satisfying. So let's put it all together as best as we can. I'm going to keep attacking. I'm going to make reads on whether he's going high or low or, or th trying to throw me in Victor's case. And then I'm going to try and punish the strings as well. There's a low. And you don't got to worry about missing a few key, key punishes here. That one is unsafe, actually, the knee. The biggest thing we want to do is build the visual recognition. Like, there's a lot happening on screen. We want to block a lot to start to understand what our opponent's character is doing. High, low string that I did not duck. Check it out. Okay, break that throw. If he's going to run up and do that, by the way, I'll just duck. Show me that you're going to do the mid, bro. There we go. He did the mid. <laughs> nice. So he's mixing it up a lot. So if you're blocking a lot, say you already know the punishes. Say you already know what the character does. But you're getting mixed up for free like this. What is the counterplay to that? Now you got to play your character. Okay, in this game, defending is so hard that if you try to play straight defense, you will get bodied. There's a little punish there. So I have to play more Jin in order to shut off and counter the victor, right? Messed up the combo. Oop. There's a launch there. Cool. A little mix up there. Don't have to back off there. I have the advantage. He's waking up. So there's really no need for me to completely chill out. I can continue to press my advantage. I might not get immediate damage, like a free follow-up, but I get a free mix-up. And in this game, getting a mix-up is huge. That uh, armor is high, right? It's a really, really good move, but it's a high. So if you have a good read on it, you can duck it. Can't sidestep it to the right that easily, I guess. There's a punish on the uh, armored mid. Remember that armored mids are usually unsafe, so... That move is unsafe. You can actually launch that, but... Ooh, missed my whiff punish. And then he goes low again because he's not getting enough damage on me and feels the need to get it. All right. So integrating my offense is more likely to make him play a bit more unsafe. There's a famous quote from Anakin. If you don't know Anakin, one of the goats of American Tekken. He said, even a toddler can mix you up. Okay, unsafe. The idea behind that quote is that you need to apply enough pressure that you're not getting freestyled on. So, um, it's not feasible to just block punish when you're trying to learn this. You will lose. But it is a useful method for starting to download how the other character works and build more character knowledge up. The idea is that once you get it comfortable enough that you're not learning your character in addition to learning other characters, this method becomes easier and easier to see. Really taking in what their strings look like and whether there's a mid or a high that can be abused. That said, I don't think as of Tekken 8 that it's fully possible to dodge practice mode the entire time. But I'll show you after this match how we can look at it shortly, right? You don't have to go in for hours into the lab. You can just focus on the problems that the other character is giving you. So after this, we'll demonstrate a quick little replay analysis and how you can use that. Oh, nice armor. Okay. Oh, that's actually the launch, but I missed the punish. That's safe in heat. If he does the knee, I want to duck the gun. Okay. I... Oh, wow. And then he does the low because he wants damage. Whoa. He does the low because he wants damage. I've been blocking so much, I've started mixing him up. Pressure's on to equalize the health difference. That's a bit of a higher level read, I think. Uh, like, player habit. Um... You don't got to worry about that. Although, if your natural talent happens to be making these kinds of reads, it's not for me. I've had to train a lot of that. Then you can definitely do that. I'm not going to stop you from trying to make reads. But our focus on this video is developing that punishment awareness, right? How do you learn the opponent's move list? 
while all of this is happening to you. Hopefully those rules were a little helpful. Again, I want to go into replay analysis after to get it a little more clean. Um, but yeah, at this point, uh, I'm actually recording this live. So if Twitch chat has specific questions about this topic, I'm happy to answer them right now, uh, especially as we uh, flow more into like an attacking style, uh, integrating our character, uh, our character's game plan, uh, and then transitioning into the replay analysis. So, you've played Tekken 7 since launch. How much time do you think it will take for them to make a balance patch? I didn't play Tekken 7 since launch. I played a little bit in Season 1, and then I took a long break because I was playing League of Legends. For someone who's getting into Tekken, your channel is incredible. Oh, thank you. I thought that was a question. <laughs> what about Sidestep, or is this advanced? Sidestep is a bit more advanced. Right now, we're talking about block punishment specifically. Frame traps on strings, uh, for opponents' frame traps, if you mash and get hit, that's how you can start to tell. Shred Gaming is in the chat. GG's, we just fought him. He's the victor. Um, I'm talking to the people right now about uh, replay analysis, or, or sorry, about block punishment. And we're going into replay analysis now to uh, put it all together, right? So you're in game, you're trying to learn these tactics, you're trying to learn what the, not tactics, it's not tactics at all. You're learning the fundamentals of the game. What do the opponent's moves do? Okay, so right now what I want to show is how you can use replay analysis to supplement this. I don't think it's possible to learn everything you need to know about Tekken in the game itself. Spoiler, you see, if you sat around for 26 minutes hoping that there was a secret, I'm sorry, there's not. And I actually messed up this setting here. What we want to do when we go into the replay, I'm going to back out here and demonstrate it is we want to pick our character's side. By picking our character's side, you can start to see the game will actually recommend you the correct punishes, the correct defensive options, and uh, teach you in action. So loading is a bit slow. We're gonna go back to the, back to the main menu and uh, do this properly. Is it more beneficial to just learn the 10 frame and launch punish, or to learn all and then try 10 frame and try higher? I recommend if you want the fastest way, just learn those two. But if you're really interested in like getting really robust, like strong fundamental whiff punishment as quickly as possible, not like about winning, not about like your results or ranking up, then yeah, yeah, learn them all. But this specific topic is geared towards people who want to like get the best ranked performance as quickly as possible. What's your general philosophy on lows? Are they meant to be reactable or combination of opponent read knowledge check? Uh, no, lows are to stop people from stand blocking. Some are reactable, some aren't. All right, so I've, I've done the correct replay setting here. And now what I want to do is turn on the proper settings in the replay, okay? So hit properties, we want on. We want to see high, mids, and lows, okay? Recommended punishment techniques. Display while paused. If you're new to the game, pause the game every time something happens. Get a notepad. I have a notepad here. Everybody asks, it's notepad++. plus plus. And write these down, okay? Write these down. Next thing, recommended sample combos I would avoid for now. This is specifically about punishment. You can learn your combos later. High moves you can duck under. Very, very important, okay? And then throw commands. I believe this is important. This is new to me. This wasn't in the last game. That should be everything. You want to see the opponent's command history so you can recreate the moves they're doing. And you can ignore the attack info. This is like combo punishment, stuff like that. Okay, so this should be a good balance of what's on screen, okay? And you'll see that the game will basically pause on recommendations. So here, it didn't pause because I got a punish. But the recommended punish is while rising too, which we talked about is our launch punish. So you would also ideally note down punishes you missed. So what input did Victor do? I'm looking at the right side here, and it's near the bottom because there were so many inputs. Uh, you can't see my mouse cursor. Let me turn that on really quick. Should be capturing the cursor. Hang on. You see? Oh, there it is. Right here. You can see... Uh, sorry, up here, up one plus two. So now I know that the input I just blocked is up one plus two. And my recommended punish is while standing two, while rising two. Keep it moving. Okay. Here's another recommended punish. What move did he do? It says one, but he was crouching, right? So if we look at the status, he was crouching and then he hit one. This is while rising one and it recommends me down through plus four, which is my launch. Okay, so I'm going to write that down too. Victor does while standing one. So this is Victor's move and then Jin punish, okay? So Jin punishes with while standing two. You have to write these down probably unless your memory is insanely good. I have to write these down. 
So the game tells me down three plus four, but I can also use up four, okay? Keep it moving. You don't have to memorize it now. Just write it down, get what you need out of the replay, and move on. Okay, cool. It tells me the throw break. So what throw did he do? Forward one plus three. This is a throw. And the break, let's clean this up a bit. The break is one or two. Not all throws will be one or the other, okay? I have a throw break training video. Be sure to check that out. Okay, recommended punish. Look at this. Back 2-1. I didn't do it. The game paused for me. What is the move he did? Forward, forward, two. Back 2-1. And then I whiffed. <laughs> and basically, this is how you'll go through the entire VOD. High moves you can duck under. This move can be punished after evading with a crouch. What did he do? Down forward four, two, okay? Looking at the hits here, down forward four, and then two. So I'll write that down. You could say duck, second hit. Okay, that wasn't a punish, so the game didn't say anything. I just whiff punished him a few times, okay? Oh, sorry, I hit one plus two, I'm at one plus three. Thank you, thank you for catching that. Okay, so I got the punish here, but you'll look at the frame data. You can actually see minus 12. Okay, so it won't show it if you succeeded, usually. It will show it if you could have gotten a better punish, which is why why these two up here in the notes recommended punishes still is because there were better ones. Another reason the game might not recommend a punish is because there's an extension to this string. So he can hit two again and pull out the gun. But three hits alone is minus 12. This is where, again, practice mode comes into play. Okay, I broke the throw, so I think if you succeed, it's just not going to say anything. Right, I broke that one plus two throw earlier, so nothing. There it tells me again, you can duck that. We already have that in our notes. So that big sword move, let's look at it. I'm just curious about this move. So I re I'll rewind the replay and look at the frame data in the bottom right. Minus nine, the minus nine move. So his is completely safe. So this is good to know. Looks like that armor move is also minus nine, completely safe. But at least that means I get my turn, right? I can start to apply a mix-up. Tell me the throw command again, because I was too slow. But yeah, I think you kind of get the point by now. This is how you'll go through the entire replay. And uh, there, okay, so some punishes still get recommended, some don't. This is how you'll go through the entire replay. Um, if you don't want to go through every character's move list, this is what I recommend. If you don't want to do this, the reality of the matter is you'll eventually get stuck. It's really hard to get good at this game without learning the key details. You don't have to learn it all at once. I get that it's really overwhelming to study everything at once, right? But if you consistently turn away from these opportunities to learn, it is inevitable that you will get stuck because you'll be losing to people who know not only these things, but how to abuse these things. If you are never punishing the unsafe moves your opponent does, then they basically have access to god moves, right? The reason a move is punishable, just conceptually in Tekken, is because the reward is so high. The move is so good that unless you make it punishable, it'll get spammed all day. Well, if you never punish it, then it's always going to get spammed, no matter what. So that is the philosophy between behind why moves are punishable and why we should really learn punishment. Okay, so as of the rest of the replay, you'll see me not breaking a bunch of throws. That's pretty much it. So go into your replays, go into ranked, try to apply this blocking method. That's not, where is it? Here, try to apply this blocking method just to get opportunities and then complement that with the replay system and take notes. And eventually your punishment will get good, but definitely my peak recommendation is sticking to, wait, this isn't, these aren't the notes I took. We'll find these, hang on. Did I delete the notes? Oh, they're up here. <laughs> um, the key notes are here. Uh, learn your like the, the bare minimum minimum punishment just your quick uh, fast move punishment and then your quick launches and just take those okay um, the optimal way isn't always going to be information dumping because not everybody learns best that way so the idea here is that we're covering multiple ways to learn punishment to cover multiple learning styles this video has gone on long enough hope you enjoyed this uh, leave a like if you did leave a comment if you have any questions or if I missed something and I'll catch you in the next video peace